Barbarians are badasses. We all know this to be true. So I'm going to make a D&D scale barbarian miniature totally from scratch. And wow, there is so much cool concept art for barbarians out there. Not just from video games, but also just from history, like Vikings and Celts. There's a lot of cool examples of historical figures that you could qualify as a barbarian. If you're new to my channel, what's up dudes? I'm Andy and I'm learning how to sculpt tabletop RPG miniatures, handcrafting them completely from scratch. As always, I like to start my armatures with a paperclip that I rescued from a trash can. My first video details this process, so if you're ever curious and you want to see how I clearly make them, you can check out that video. Making the armature is definitely the part I feel most confident in, and that might be because, objectively, it's the easiest part. But the nice thing about using paperclips is that you can practice making them wherever you are. When they inevitably come out awful some of the time, you can just recycle them. I'm using cost clay again for this build. It's just good stuff. It's a bit flexible when it dries so it won't crumble away like some of the other clays sometimes do. Durability is really the main priority for me when crafting because if I'm going to spend a fair bit of time creating something, I don't want it to be super fragile. During this build I've been finding a ton of cool inspiration just from Google images of barbarian artwork. So I googled barbarian artwork and there's just so much cool stuff. It seems like a lot of them have various leather straps and ropes tied onto them. And this works well for me because that's a very easy detail to add with clay. Another overwhelmingly prevalent characteristic among these barbarian artworks is furs. I feel like almost every one that I saw had some sort of fur, pelt, something tied onto their armor or woven into their armor in some way. This is really common on bracers and boots especially. This is a type of clay texture I had no idea how to make prior to this first attempt but I found a really simple way to accomplish it. I just basically did a bunch of dragged pokes, just like I would usually draw fur or hair with a pencil. Now time to get the fur texture approved by my supervisor. And looks like we got it! I think the overlapping lines are what help make it believable as fur when it's painted, dark washed, and tried brushed. Now I'm adding another few slender cords of clay to outline the borders of the torso armor. Part of what motivated me to make a barbarian next was the fact that I've been watching a lot of my friends play Diablo 4 and oh my goodness, like that game looks sick. I wanted to make a little central sternal crest type thing, just like this. Then I added another second slender clay cord below the border to try to imply that there's some fur layered underneath the armor that's puffing out beneath the armor. Then a little belt. Then I wanted to add some pauldrons that are pretty basic, mainly focusing on trying to get pretty symmetrical pads here. Now it's time to put the face on. I'd like to take his, his face off. And this is always the hardest part for me and it feels like the part I make the slowest progress on, but I think I realized the reason for that and it's relatively obvious. Every mini I make I sculpt two feet, two hands, two arms, two legs, and only one face. One nose, one mouth, one chin. A butt, two kneecaps, a penis. I have just described to you the Loch Ness Monster. I think I just need to keep getting more reps in on faces. Honestly, one of the highlights of this build for my sculpting process was the ears. I think they're a bit too large. They're definitely not normal scaled sized ears, but the morphology is pretty solid, I think. Adding on the ears one by one kind of made me think of Mr. Potato Head. I decided a cool way to step up the texture and detail to the next level would be to actually sculpt a big braid in the hair. And there's also a lot of cool braids shown in barbarian concept art. 
This was so much fun and way easier than I expected it would be. That seems like it would be a complex detail, but I think braiding the clay cords was actually way easier than braiding actual string or hair because it sticks to itself and it sticks in place instead of flopping all around and loose, loosening repeatedly if you don't hold constant pressure. There's none of that nonsense. Then the rest of the hair was essentially formed with clay cord locks that I tried to blend together to make a more cohesive, homogenous, flowing hair look. I wanted the big braid to go from the forehead all the way to the back and the rest of the hair around that to be down. And thankfully, there's tons of hairstyle reference photos. Next I made the axe. This is a pretty quick process, only took me maybe two minutes, and I'm going to leave the boots alone because I have a plan for them later. Then the mini was ready for its initial oven forging. In essence, Sculpting Miniatures from Scratch offers a pretty unique blend of artistic expression, customization, and a personal connection to the characters you bring to life in your tabletop adventures. This is what makes it, for me, a pretty fulfilling and enjoyable aspect of tabletop gaming in general. If you've got the patience and creativity to try to craft some of these unique characters for your, your own tabletop games, I think you'll find that your players might really form a connection with these characters. And at least in my experience, the people that I've played with greatly, greatly appreciate a handcrafted miniature much more than a purchased one or a 3D printed one. This can be especially true if one of your players or multiple of your players have a unique quality or an item or some characteristic that's so unusual and outlandish that you're never going to find a pre-made miniature that you can buy or an STL file that you can print that will characterize your miniature or, or represent them accurately. The bracers are basically just two more slender clay cords for the borders at the wrist and the forearm, and then a thin sheet of clay in the middle, which will be sculpted to look a little more like fur. Here I'm just razoring in some finger separations. And I feel like these came out pretty solid, honestly. They look just like some leather bracers I remember having when I played World of Warcraft. So I'm happy to report there are multiple parts of this build which I actually think look pretty cool. Progress has been made. Anyway, time for the final bake. Now on to the boots. My plan here was to create that classic wrapped leather look using torn up strips of napkin. In the past I've used napkins to make pants and shirts for my NPCs and thought those came out pretty decent. And I thought this plan would help the texture on the boots stand out from the other sculpted clothes and armor better since it's a physically different material. The axe handle got a nice thick coat of PVA glue, which gave it a little bit more irregular, imperfect texture and thickened it up a little bit. Then after attaching it, and again, the exposed armature thumbs are super helpful here. This is like the best thing I've come up with yet. I've never seen anyone else do this, but I highly recommend it. Now it's time to prime. I'm gonna speed through the painting here because there's just so many other better mini painters on YouTube and I can't really relay much value in terms of painting other than maybe making people feel better about their own painting skills. But I look at this part of the build more as a video journal for myself, hopefully showcasing my progress when I look back at this later. In terms of entertainment value, I have noticed that my cats are much more interested in the painting stage than the sculpting one. I think what made sculpting this miniature so fun was all the textures. Between the furs and the armor and the hair and the leather bootstraps, a dark wash and dry brushing go a really long way towards instantly making those features so much more convincing and realistic, despite my underdeveloped noobish painting skills. 
I kind of feel like I'm getting to a cool point with my mini making where I can compensate for my poor painting skills or at least prepare in advance for them using kind of exaggerated textures. This time around I wanted to experiment with one of those fancy store-bought dark washes and this is how it went. I think it worked pretty decent compared to my homemade washes, so I'll probably start using it but very sparingly just to save it for important details like faces. For the eyes, my basic steps were these. Heavy dark wash around the eyes to imply smudged war paint. Then I painted the whites of the eyes. Then I made the iris somewhat dark so I don't have to separately try to paint a pupil. And then I went back and forth between these steps a bunch of times, just kept getting the eyes pretty noticeably asymmetrical. And this was actually a good thing because I got more repetitions painting eyes, redoing them a few times over and over. So I bet the next time I try to paint eyes I'll be that much more prepared. Finally a little thread belt, and then it's time to base. This is always the part of the project that demonstrates to me the most obvious quantitative measure of my progress. I can't wait to see how the handcrafted minis are looking when I'm halfway through this 100 pack of counting chip bases. Overall, if you can overlook a slightly wonky looking face, not bad at all. I actually feel like this mini is not too far off from the lower quality pre-painted minis I've gotten over the years like the Hero Clicks or Mage Knight boxes. Here's my Barbarian mini next to the bard that I made in my last video. All my friends that I showed this mini to said that I did such a good job painting Quasimodo. <laughs> At least it was positive feedback, even if it was not at all what I was going for. <laughs> if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. So that's mini number 12. Stay tuned to see the rest of my tabletop miniature sculpting journey, and I'd love to hear your best roast of my minis in the comments. Seriously though, special thanks to these thoughtful kind strangers who left me comments on my videos. Editing these videos takes me a tremendous amount of time. Honestly, like way more than I would have expected when I was just watching videos on YouTube. By the way, I have so many projects completely done, start to finish, filmed, and the only thing holding up sharing them with you lovely people is that I am so slow at editing. <laughs>